HR. I don't know if y'all are connected, but he put yeah, out familiar. a yeah put out a manifesto, and in that manifesto, the future of HR, the future of workforce, uh, and I and I fear if we have not qualified a lot of our uh, emerging professionals coming into human resources that succession because this manifesto talked about how the future of workforce and HR leaders are going to have to have better understanding in psychology. Um, psychologists, clinical psychologists that we're going to see navigating into the human resources, people leading space, people management space. And I could not agree more. And I know that that's going to be disruptive to so many of my human resources colleagues. Mm -hmm. That's okay because we have navigated too much away from the people aspect by trying to create more resourcing and structure and if there's anything that we've known over the history of mankind, humankind, people kind, is that we are in evolution. We will find a way to evolve and get around a policy, to get around a, whatever that is not making us feel belonging and worth. We will, workforces will navigate a way around it. Yeah. And so what you just said takes so much of that guilt away from that HR person that we don't have to fix it. Listen, listen. Whew. What comes up for me there too, and, and I'll invite Tim even, because he talks about it way better than I do. It's, it's this idea of how much can you own someone else's issue anyway? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I was teeing you up. You're teed up, Tim. Come on, Dr. Tim. <laughs> That's good. That That is... That is good shit in this, again, in the sense that that alleviates so much of that, that guilt from that HR worker who is, yeah. who is compressed between the leader's expectation and the employee's expectation of mm -hmm. how to help, help the organization and help the person. That's heavy. One of our mindset questions is, is really around that idea, and it's am I owning – what is mine or what I'm responsible for and letting go of what I can't control. And it's such a good reminder of what can I control? I can't control someone else's experience. I can't. I can relate to it. I can listen to it. I can understand it. I can interact with it, but I can't control it. And when I try to, I actually erase their right to have it. Mm -hmm. And we get stuck then in <clears throat> trying to control something that I can't. And in doing that, we drop what we can, which is our behavior, our response, our, our listening, our capacity to listen. And so I think just sitting with what can I control? I can't control their experience. I can control my behavior and both can all be here. And I love how you talk about, we can navigate that. And as a helper, one of my jobs as a helper is to be a listener and to be a 49% shareholder in the other person's success, mm. right? I'm a minority owner. Yeah, I'm a 49% shareholder at most in the other person's success right? That's what we can be as a helper. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a hard spot to be because mm -hmm. it's like, well, I'm not in charge, <laughs> but I get to have a really big stake here if I mm -hmm. want to participate. Right. And so always reminding myself, okay, I can go all the way up to 49% of this. That's as mm -hmm. much effort as I'm able to put in. And that actually lets the individual who's receiving the support feel totally empowered, totally mm -hmm. supported, and allowed to have their truth and, and explore what to do with it. And there's no way for us to have that 49% unless we know who we are going into it. Yeah. Leader, frontline manager, yep. uh, worker, we, we better know ourselves. Yep. Is what I can bring my resources into helping, mm -hmm. right? But not into owning or controlling. Right. 